was Corpus Christi, Texas, in the year of 1889, a waterfront cow town serving as one of the gateways to the new empire of the West. Drawing ships and people from all over the world. But not all those visitors were traders or settlers. Foreign agents were being sent to steal secrets vital to the welfare of the nation. To protect them, our government in Washington employed its own confidential operators. In the first place, they don't call them boats. In the second place, you ain't going aboard. Well, uh, I got business out there. Oh, yeah? When I give a man an order, I expect it to be obeyed. This guy slugged me when I tried to go on a boat. I just didn't want any stranger snooping around, that's all. This is my partner, Stoney Crockett. He's okay. All right, so now I know. We won't need your help any longer to take care of our little shipment. That's fine for me. Good luck to you. This guy's got a real even disposition. Miserable all the time. He's our first mate, Stoney. What do you expect? Hey, what's this all about, anyway? What's our assignment? I don't know for sure, Stoney. All I know are riding herd on a couple of boxes I picked up at the commissioner's office in New York. Boxes? What's in them? Something very secretive, highly explosive. One false move and they'll pick us up in a basket. So we'd better get the boxes off the ship and aboard the pack animal. Remember me. I was a passenger on the Southern Queen. How could I forget you? I'm Miss Barrett. I have an idea that we're looking for the same thing. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. You're working for a certain group that's very interested in those two boxes you brought over on your boat. All right, so what? I'm working for another syndicate that feels the same way about those boxes. Only I happen to know that my employers are willing to pay a lot more money than yours. That sounds interesting. So why don't you throw in with me? I'm listening. What's your plan? Pick up two or three gunfighters, stay with those two Secret Service men, and try to get the boxes if you can. And if I can't? Then follow the Nueces River west about 20 miles. The United States government has a very secret experimental station out that way. So we meet there. I'm sure you'll show up. I'm sure I will. Well, I guess I better see about picking up those men you mentioned. Good day, ma'am. get this shoe checked. Now, this baby is going to come up lame. Yeah. You better get him to the forge. And don't let these boxes out of your sight. Oh, don't worry. I'll go send a wire to the commission and tell him I got here okay. Okay. Uh, 
uh, could you please tell me where I can find the blacksmith shop? Why, yes, you'll find it over at the... I... Uh, well, if it isn't my old friend, Stoney Crockett. Oh. Zerbo, what are you doing here? Why, uh, <clears throat> I'll have you know that I'm a respectable professional man. Uh -huh. And uh, from now on, you may call me <laughs> Dr. Zerbo, P.D. What does the P.D. stand for? Painless dentist. Painless dentist. You know, you pulled a lot of shady deals in the past. Painless, huh? Well, this one takes the cake. This is the worst one you've ever done. Now, now, Stoney, let's not be hasty in our judgment. Why, I can prove that I can take out teeth without pain. Yeah, how can you prove it? Uh, come on inside. Wait till I tie this horse up. Now, listen, Stoney, I've got the greatest... All right, all right, all right. I'll go once more, once more. <laughs> now, Stoney, would you mind sitting in this chair? I want to take a look at your teeth. There's nothing wrong with yeah, my that, teeth. That's all right now. Uh, open your mouth wide. Um, a little wider, please. Mm, it's mighty dark in there. Uh, it's much better now. Uh, huh? mm, wow! Anything wrong, Doc? Anything wrong? Ah, you need glasses. Yeah. Why, you phony little faker. I can't believe a word you say. Uh, now, wait a minute, Stoney. Oh, Just wait. a minute, Stoney. I can explain everything, believe me. Now, here is the means by which I extract teeth without pain. What is it? Gas. Yeah, you see? You take one little sniff of this stuff, and you are in dreamland. A very pleasant sleep. Ha. Stoney, I could take out all your teeth, and you'd never know. You better not. Well, now, look, you just try it. Oh. Yeah. Now, you see, the gas is stored in this cylinder right here. Now, I turn this little valve on, and the gas flows right through this tube very slowly, and it comes out up at the other end of the entrance to the tube. Come in. Well, as I was saying, hey, mm, it works. This is stuff I want right here. Well, let's take it. Wait a minute, not so fast. They're watching us, we'll be sitting ducks. Wait here. What kind of a deal is this? I don't know, it, it works so fast. All I did was put the mask up against the space like this, and all of a sudden, before you knew what happened, he was... All right, grab that pack horse, let's go. time to get him to the blacksmith shop. He's still laying. They won't get far. Good. Look, maybe we can overtake him. Can you ride? Sure, I can ride. I'm all right. Well, let's ride. Yeah, we're clawing on him. Let's go. That pack horse has slowed us down. We'll have to fight them all.
close. This is Tony. Yeah? You stay here and keep me covered. I'm going to have a look around. All right. Give me a hand. What are you going to do? There's a steep draw down the trail. Yeah. A pack horse is grazing it. Yeah. You stay here and draw their fire. When you hear me whistle, come on the double. Gee, thanks. Come from. Down the draw. River, what else are we looking for? We're looking for a shack alongside of its bank. Yeah, I wonder if that sailor and his boys are still in back of it. We'll find out sooner or later. I mean to find the shack and get rid of these boxes. Professor Beeman? Yes? My name is Pat Gallagher, sir. I'm Stony Crockett. You're the two Secret Service men. That's right, Professor. Here's the boxes you've been waiting for. I was beginning to wonder if they were going to get here. Well, we got uh, sidetracked just a little bit. By the way, Professor, uh, what's in these boxes? These two boxes contain what is probably the most powerful explosive in the world. Super dynamite. Did you hear that? <laughs> it's all over the day's work, Stony. 
We'll carry him in for you, Professor. You will, not me, boy. Don't trip now, or we all go. Yeah, there they are. Want to go down? No, not yet. We'll find the right time to make her move. Would you put them there on the table? Well, thank you very much. Have a nice trip back, gentlemen. Our orders are to stay here and assist you, Professor Beeman. I'm glad to hear that. You know, these may prove to be quite important to the welfare of our nation, gentlemen. We have here two components of a super powerful gelatin that we believe will explode underwater, something that's never been done. That's the reason for your trip and for all this secrecy. If our experiments are successful in exploding dynamite underwater, it will be a great asset to our government. Would you say other parties would be interested in knowing about this, Professor? Many people would stop at nothing to know the results of this experiment. That sailor. That's why he was after the boxes. He's a spy. A spy? I'm not surprised. Although, that's why we picked this spot. We hope they wouldn't find it. Well, Stoney, we'd better start a patrol. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. See you later, Professor. We couldn't hold on to them. That's all right. They're going to do some experiments. We want the reports on those. It's Gallagher. You better leave it. We'll be around if you need us. Hello, ma'am. Are you lost? Not at all. Well, this is federal property. Restricted area. We don't allow any trespassing. I'm sure you didn't mean it. Well, I won't do any harm. I'm just a rock hound. A what? A rock hound. I collect stones. Some of them are semi-precious, like these turquoise. I found these in Arizona. Well, they're very nice. But I'm sorry, you can't trespass here. And no prospecting. And that's an order. Okay, mister. That's the way you want it. You better get back into town. It looks like we might have some rain. You've been gone a long time. Did you see anything up there? Uh, only a girl. Well, we got a girl here, too. You got a girl inside? Yeah, sure. She's a beaut, too. What do you think? You're the only handsome one in this outfit? Let me talk to her. Yeah, she's in with the professor. You haven't got a chance. Sounds very interesting, professor. I thought I told you this was a restricted area. You did. But you also told me there was a storm brewing. I was afraid I'd get lost, so I came here. Miss Barrett tells me she's something of a geologist. She might be quite a help to us. That all right with you? Of course it's all right. Now we'll make the test as quickly as possible. A heavy rain might raise the river and delay my work for weeks. There's one thing I don't understand about this exploding dynamite. How are you going to make the fuse burn underwater? We've got to use something that's never been seen out here before. Electricity. Let me show you how. Now, we make the electric current by cranking this. Store it in these Leiden jars and set it off with these individual switches, providing you connect this master wire to complete the circuit. We're all set, Professor. Oh, good. After five years of experimenting, I hope this works. Yeah, I hope so. Wonderful. Whew, we'll set off the other one in a moment. Miss Barrett, would you care to set the next one off? Yes, I'd like to. Well, this is great. Everything's working out as we expected. It doesn't work. The concussion must have jarred the wire loose. Uh, would you check it? Me? All right, but uh, would you kind of stay away from those doohickeys while I'm in the water? I'll give you a hand. Gee, thanks. Oh, 
trouble right here. With it. I'll meet you at the hotel in Corpus Christi. Right. Come on. Is she all right? Yeah, she's going to be all right. Oh, Professor Beeman's hurt bad. Where's the report? I guess they got that, too. We better get him into the hospital at Corpus Christi right away. Okay. I hope you'll be feeling better. Oh, I'm sure I will. Well, I guess this is goodbye. I'm sorry your job was such a failure. Well, they all can't be a success. I just left the hospital, Pat, and Professor Beeman's going to be all right. The doctor says it's just a matter of time now. That's good news. Well, goodbye, Miss Barrett. Goodbye, Pat. Good luck to you. You too, Johnny. Thank you very much, miss. You, baby, you took care of those guys in fine shape. Is the report safe? Right there. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Professor Beeman and you and I were the only ones who knew how to connect that master switch. And you didn't say anything. You just waited for me to make a mistake. Not exactly. I was waiting for you to lead me to those reports. And I'll take them, Miss Barrett. Pat, we could mean so much to each other. Give me another chance. much of a chance. After you, Miss Bird. 